are beautiful women and lovely men. Yes, <laughs> I'm extra hyped because I'm going home on time as requested. Now, the first actual requested home time that I did was back in September. And I mean, granted, between September and now, I've stopped home and did like a 34-hour reset or I just stayed the night at home because I had a load delivering really close to home. So home time is up to your own discretion. Only you are in control of whether you're accepting or denying certain loads. And it's not your driver's manager's responsibility. It's not your dispatcher's responsibility. If you live in California and you and you need to be home by the 17th, there's no way in the hell you should have accepted a load that was in Connecticut around the 15th or the 16th. That's That was your own fault, <laughs> like for real. There are some cases or some situations to where you may not always make it home on time. I mean, I'm not sure what, what those cases or situations entail, but I guess it really honestly could happen if it's not done correctly. But home time is up to your own control. Yes, there will be some unforeseen circumstances that are out of your control, but when it comes to home time, it can honestly happen on time, all the time, if it's done correctly. The other thing is, I encourage women to come out here. But if you come out here, do it wisely. Seriously. There are some shysty men out here who be plotting out on women and who literally watch women like a hawk. In and out of truck stops. In and out of distribution centers. Like, there was this lovely man <laughs> that I met. And he was telling me how he would never allow his wife to um become a truck driver to step in a truck his um lady cousins whatever case may be and he feels like men are supposed to be the providers which is i mean it's true okay and he feels like just women are supposed to kind of like stand by and be um taken care of which i don't fault him for that but if you're a woman specifically like and you want to come out here come out here but do so with caution like, just be very, very careful about how, about how you go about your situation. Like, don't come out here and befriend everyone or anyone who's helping you within a situation and who may seem friendly in that situation until you feel like you need to befriend them. No, <laughs> it should not work like that. Like, when I'm doing my um, my 30-minute breaks, and especially if I start on the late night, and it's like 2, um, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm doing my 30-minute break at the field aisle, 15 minutes at the pump, 15 minutes when I pull up just because why do I feel like I need to um, park or find a parking spot to do my 30 minute break that late at night it's it's not gonna fly by it don't fly where it don't work with me like that <laughs> I do my breaks at the fuel aisle because I feel like it's a lot more safer in doing so whenever I'm parking and I'm done for the day um I'll try then say it's like really really early in the morning more than likely around seven six o'clock in the morning a lot of truck drivers have left so i'm gonna try to find i'm gonna try my best to find a parking spot that's close enough to the truck stop uh door to where it's not gonna take me years and a day to walk to the <laughs> inside a truck stop this is simple as that i don't think that you have to change up your style so much just because your environment changed women if you feel like you need to wear your makeup, wear your makeup. <laughs> if you feel like you need to get your hair did, get your hair did. Get your nails done. <laughs> Embrace all of that. But just do so carefully. Literally. <laughs> like, just be very, very careful of how you do it. There was a situation to where I was in Pennsylvania. And I was at this Flying J. I was doing my 30-minute break. And it was in the daytime. So I peep game, of course. Because you always want to be able to analyze and observe your situation, your surroundings, or whoever. So... Um, as I park, I step out the truck, and need I remind, and Grant, when I got out the truck, there was this man who was leaving the truck stop. He had purchased or bought whatever he needed to buy because he had whatever he needed in his hand. So he was about to step in his truck. So when I walk up to towards the door, there was another man who was smoking a cigarette. And all I could think about was like, don't, like, I don't really want to hear what you have to say, cause, but I felt like he was about to make conversation with me. So he complimented me, and he kept it really short and really brief. So I went inside the truck stop and I purchased whatever I needed to purchase and there was another man who was standing in front of me who was buying whatever he needed to buy. So as I was done checking out, the man who was outside smoking a cigarette, he was inside sitting in front of this like slot machine, whatever, on, a, on top of a stool and as he's sitting there, he's asking me, so, oh, so you're a truck driver, so how long you been out here driving trucks? And I'm like, I really wasn't for it. <laughs> like and then the other man who was literally damn near almost inside of his truck he came back inside to ask me oh so you a truck driver and i'm thinking like <laughs> yeah so what you know so 
it was so annoying so the man who was standing in front of me when um during the checkout process he was kind of walking alongside me and he was he was grinning in like a, a good way i guess in an assuring type of way he was like oh you ought to carry some pepper spray with you and i was like you damn right <laughs> you know so it's just i don't know you with women specifically you'll go through it when it comes to being harassed or being questioned unnecessarily like people are always watching you so if you come out here don't be afraid to come out here and drive trucks and feel empowered or whatever case may be because you can Again, it is a predominantly male profession, but you can come out here, but just do it carefully. The last thing is, I went to Laredo for the first time, and oh my god, I thought I was about to die. <laughs> like it was, it was an interesting experience, and I went there some weeks, some odd weeks ago. Don't remember when, but as I was out there. And I don't mean to offend anyone who is from Mexico or anyone who is Mexican. This is just kind of like my take on it. <laughs> like, I felt like as I'm driving, I can stick my hand outside the window and I'm in Mexico. <laughs> it was it was real. It was an experience that I drove in the daytime. Because if I drove at night and I made like the wrong turn, I would have been screwed for real. So I drove in the daytime and... There's a um a facility out there, Laredo, Texas. There's a facility out there to where um I was able to pick up, drop off what I need to drop off, pick up, and then keep it on moving. <laughs> so I was driving on this um divided like highway, and it's just bushes all around. And I'm thinking like somebody gonna come out and just start shooting up the truck. Like I was nervous <laughs> for real, and I don't I, like I was extra hype about it because I've never experienced those type of feelings before when it came to driving somewhere so yes laredo texas it was real <laughs> it was but um again hometown can be done correctly if you're already routed almost close to home when you need to be home when it comes to my women out here who want to come out here you can come out here and do so just be very very careful and um analytical of your surroundings <laughs> And Laredo, I don't know if I want to do that anytime soon, but it's an it's honestly an adventure every time I go somewhere new. And that's it. Y'all make sure y'all stay safe and.